Woo! What a time. Anywho, right? <laughs> we're moving on. It's going to be a long and episode. This is, this is a long episode. Y'all just going to have to stick to it. So, in probably the biggest news of the week, WWE has officially been sold. Uh, it was announced this past Monday, prior to Monday Night Raw, that World Wrestling Entertainment has been sold to Endeavor, uh, the pa- who is the, the parent company of UFC. And they have merged uh, to create in what they're calling a $21 billion company. Um, estimate, so it's, it's probably the estimated sales around eight to nine well, not the estimated sale, but the valuation of WWE is probably around eight to nine billion. And they, they, in their words, they are trying to create a new kind of frontier for entertainment and sports. Uh, they're apparently going to rename the company, but WWE has officially sold. That quest has ended. Um, Vince McMahon also is joining the Endeavor board and is still a part of WWE as the executive chairman. Uh, apparently, okay. WWE so yeah, <laughs> WWE has sold uh, I think about fifty one percent of the company, um, and WWE stockholders retain about forty nine percent ownership. But I wanted to actually ask you, how did you feel about this sale, and how do you feel like this will affect the future of WWE? I'm so stuck on the Vince being endeavored because like we've been talking about this, we've been talking about this. And, like, I never believe that he really, truly went anywhere. I do believe that Hunter had some control. But I don't really think he really just, like, left. And I saw a report saying something about um Ari Emanuel, I think his name is, is the one yeah. that convinced Vince to not drop from creative role. Um, By the way, fuck you, man. Because I feel like he never left. <laughs> so to hear that he, he's being endeavored, like, it's to me, I don't think that we'll ever get a real endeavor until that man actually drops dead, which I don't think is anytime soon because he has way too much money. Because I don't know how he's still, I don't know how. He came back, y'all. For all these months like we saw him on TV, he was, like, pale as a ghost. And then he came back. Now he has some colors to him. He has, like, he dyed his hair brown. He got a mustache now. Things are getting weird. Things are really getting <laughs> getting weird but to answer your question about like you know the UFC buying them that to me I mean I I feel like it should have happened sooner I'm actually surprised that it hasn't happened a lot sooner considering that they've been collaborating with so many other companies but I think it's a it's a power move because the UFC is not going anywhere and it's kind of funny because you always have like two different types of fans you have the people that you know on the UFC side that make fun of wrestling because it's like that's not real you know I used to watch wrestling when I was younger but then I watched the UFC I actually want to see someone take a hit and then you have people who of course appreciate pro wrestling for what it is so to see the the worlds merge is like it's exciting it gives me a little bit anxiety because I don't know what they're going to do with this first thing that came to my mind was I'm like god damn it Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler about to get one hell of a push they're about to be like if y'all thought they were annoying before they are about to be front and center just because they want to represent the ufc in some shape way or form that part was crazy to me just wow what do you think about this so for starters i i may have to agree with you that it you know in my opinion it looks like hunter kind of floated the boat and kind of steered the ship temporarily as the sale was in process and in the moment that you know it was announced that he was sold they kind of went back to the way that things were i mean as we heard with raw you know there were so many changes during the raw after mania there were three i think some some guy got like three different rundowns in like 45 minutes of just a bunch of changes to the show so it looks like things are back to the way that they are i i feel like because of Triple H's, you know, rapport with backstage and with his kind of leadership and how everybody kind of loves him. I feel like he was being propped up, one, because he is an amazing leader. We've seen him in NXT do his thing, and it seems like he curates and knows how to get people behind him, as he should, because he's a fantastic wrestling mind. But it kind of also feels like he was propped up until the the sale was made because when we talk about employee morale and we talk about a workplace and having a nice, pleasant workplace, like companies look at that. 
You know what I'm saying? Like if they want to buy a company, they're going to look at the way something is ran and how the employees are treated because that all adds into the value of the company. I think that once the sale was made, there was really no incentive to kind of keep things as they were. And I think that's going to say a lot to the talent. I think that the talent is going to respond accordingly. We've already seen a little, some shades of it, you know, with Oscar, her tweeting, we've seen Bailey put out some cryptic tweets and she wasn't even on raw with damage control, which was unfamiliar and and surprising to say the least. Um, Yeah. But it, there, there, it, it seems as if things are kind of going back to the way that they are because the sale has been made, right? Like the Endeavor owns 51% of WWE, which means that they have a majority share. Was this share. sale always planned, though? Like, uh, I see why Hunter was where he is. It kind of reminds me a bit of, like, Eric Bischoff and when Paul Heyman mm-hmm. were, like, put into position to, you know, just be the temporary face of the company even though vince was there at the time it feels like hunter was thrown in for a similar reason because you know doug you had the allegations going on and like you just said you want to make sure that you keep your your pr looking good and all that stuff but it's just like were they planning this all along but you know this shit happened with vince so this was just like an emergency call and like hunter knew this all along and just hid it from the talent I don't know, to be completely honest. I don't know. We'll never know. Really knows. Well, I don't think we'll ever know. I, I just know that when I see things like Triple H getting a five million dollar bonus off a of sale, and Nick Khan getting fifteen million dollars off a of bonus on the sale, it, it it leads me to believe that it, you know, in some world, a lot of the things that we've seen over the past eight to nine months were to incentivize or to lure companies into buying WWE, making the company more attractive in order to the for the value of this company to go up so that they can get the highest return of investment. Like, And I mean, I think that they did just that. Number one, there was a staggering stat that came out. Vince McMahon had purchased WWE for $1 million. The company is now worth $9 billion. And if the sale was for 51%, give or take, that's about $4.6 billion. Crazy. So the company got four point, whoever was a stock, well, whoever owned the company got $4.6 billion. And a lot of the guys who are major stockholders still have stock in WWE, which means that, you know, they still have a good amount of assets tied into the company. But mm-hmm. I mean, they got their return on investment. I mean, the plan worked. Uh, they sold to Endeavor. I think that this constantly, I think that WWE is going to go back to the way that it was in the sense of Vince being in control. We already saw it with the Raw after Mania. I didn't see it as much on NXT, so I think that's a good sign. We'll see I what happens. Ask, are we going to get more cuts? As far as camera cuts? Oh, no. you mean like releases? You remember like every six months we're on the edge of our seats? Like, are we going to revisit that again? You know, I don't, I don't think... <laughs> we're going to get like the larger amounts. I think that from, from, from at least from the outside looking in, it looked like they were just trying to trim the fat so that they can drive profits so that they can be more attractive to companies because they, I like by the time they sold to Endeavor, they had like multiple record setting profitable quarters in WWE. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think, we're not going to get the layoffs at the extent to where we used to get them. Mm -hmm. However, I do see some cuts coming. If Vince McMahon is involved and Vince McMahon has creative control, there's certain guys, I do (laughs) certain people. (laughs) There's certain people that I don't see Vince utilizing. And I see that there's, and I also see like, I also feel like there's going to be certain talent that Vince is going to, you know, overutilize once again, but you know, we'll see, as it pertains to that. But once again, I, I definitely expect to see from a creative standpoint, the fact that this is with UFC, uh, or not with UFC, but they're under the same parent company. I expect to see a lot of crossovers. We've been talking about Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor coming to WWE forever. And now it seems more possible than ever. Um, especially with, you know, them heading to the UK in the summer with money in the bank. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little Conor McGregor appearance out there. Um, mm. I, I think that it, there's there's a lot of crossovers that can happen. I think there are some that will happen. Um, and I'm very, very eager to kind of see where where it goes. Um, but that's 
that's all I really had to say about the WWE sale. But this, obviously, this is huge. But I wanted to to know what everybody else was thinking as it pertains to WWE selling to Endeavor, selling fifty one percent of their company, prefer, probably valued around eight to nine billion dollars. But we're gonna move on. So this past weekend. WrestleMania weekend, WrestleMania 39. Obviously, we had Hall of Fame. We had Stand and Deliver, WrestleMania Saturday and Sunday and Raw after Mania. So much happened, so little time. I wanted to know some of your standout moments, some of your low light moments, why or why not. And we let's talk about just overall WrestleMania 39 weekend impressions. Okay, I know we're pressed for time, so I'm unsure of my answer. I actually thought that night two was going to be better than night one, and it actually ended up being the other way around for me. Um, not just because of the main event flopping, and for me personally, like I thought that the match was amazing, but I just felt like it was a letdown and it was not the win. But we're going to get to that. We're going to get into the debate because me and Jordan was getting into it in the group chat. Okay, we're going to get back to that. So just, just fucking pin that, pin that in your head. Going back. Okay, I felt like. Night one came out better than night two. And the match that to me was booked perfectly that actually impressed me was tossed to bottom left to write something that like I thought was an actual WrestleMania feeling moment has to go to Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. I know that Angie touched on it. That match was good. And y'all, I don't compliment Charlotte Flair at all. I don't like the bitch. I don't like her. However... That match was amazing to the point where, like, I didn't... I'm always on my phone. I'm always on my phone. My phone was down, and I was locked in. I was locked in because I was just so amazed at Rhea and Charlotte's chemistry. I did not think they were going to top their their first WrestleMania match. I did not think that at all. But to me, they just blew me away, and it just felt like they were, like, wrestling soulmates. It felt like it was a hard-hitting, heavy match. Those two wrestled like dudes. I'm on going front. Like, it felt like watching one of the men go at it, which I love it when women wrestle like men, you know, might get some backlash for that for whatever reason. But I love it when the females just fight like, like dudes. I love it. I, I, the passion was in their eyes. The chemistry was there. The ending was phenomenal. You could see in Rhea's face, like when she won, like, yo, like I, I really am doing this shit. And I think she's a Grand Slam champion right now, which hats off to her like congratulations like she's amazing but the part obviously that i love the most is that i would never i would never have thought i seen the day that charlotte flair gets back to the women's division and there was a camera cut and i know that the cameraman did that on purpose where she was leaning by the ringside and you got that angle of uh Rhea holding her belt and charlotte's just smirking kind of like reminiscent to bianca belair versus sasha you know, where they got that that cut of Sasha just leaning the back to smiling because she she's always given back, of course, of course. But it was just like a historical moment for two black women. In this instant, it was just a historical moment just because Rhea Ripley is really young. If I'm not mistaken, she's 25, 26 years old and she's already a Grand Slam champion. And she took out like the one of the big, well, now the biggest four horse woman because Sasha's not caring anymore, obviously. Right. But that's what she's doing, you know? Like, that is insane. And I just, you, you just saw the look in Charlotte's eyes that she was just, like, so proud to give Rhea her flowers. And it made me appreciate Charlotte a little bit more because that's all I've been asking for her the entire time. Just, I'm fine with you being entitled. Can you at least use your entitlement to help others? And she finally, after all these years, damn near a decade, she did it. She did it. So I'm proud of her. That's growth for her. She may possibly have a fan in me. I don't know yet because she might piss me off later because she might just take the belt off of Rhea. But hats off to her. Amazing match. I might actually go back and watch it. So that was the match for me that made the night. I can't remember if um I can't remember if Eddie and um not Eddie, what the fuck? Eddie was not here. Eddie Eddie's up there, first of all. Um <laughs> when Ray Went against his and son, Dominic. Dominic. Yeah. That that match was actually really fun for me. I didn't know what to expect out of it. I knew that there was going to be some homage to Eddie. And I was actually expecting for, for Dominic to actually pull the lowrider gimmick. I expected that because he already had the mullet going. He's already standing next to Rhea, which is reminiscent of Eddie and China. And, you know... They they let Ray do it, and I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think that that would that that would be more brilliant. That he just came out as soon as he came out with Latino heat, bitch. I was on the floor. 
literally on the floor, <laughs> screaming and kicking on the carpet like a child. <laughs> that popped me. I have not seen a low rider in so long. It's so long. That entrance was everything. Everything. I loved it. Dominic's entrance, though, was so dramatic, child. I couldn't. I really couldn't. Like, <laughs> that entrance, I couldn't deal with. I could not deal with it because he, like, went to juvie or whatever the fuck for, like, a day. But they made it seem like he went through hell. <laughs> like, he was in the pen. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, he was there for, like, 24 hours. What do you mean? But his entrance was still fire. It was fire. The match itself was fun. There was obviously, like, you know, some Eddie moments. But, you know, you got to see, like, Dominic actually, like, hold himself, like, you know, like l- like a man. Because I feel like for the longest, it just feels like he's a kid. I feel like my brain yeah. can't unsee the, the small child watching two Mexicans climb up a ladder for a custody paper. But, like... <laughs> I love the match. I love their chemistry. I was surprised they actually put Ray over. That was the only like question mark. I was just like, usually like they, usually like the legend when they're growing out, they do the job. I was surprised that they put Ray out on top, which goes to show you how much WWE appreciates and loves Ray. Night two was a hot mess. Should I pause? <laughs> Should I let you give your takes on night one before we get into night two? Because no, night no, no. two was do a hot two. mess. Do your, do your night two, because I also want you to do my night two. Other. Night two stressed me out, child. Night two was a stressful night for everyone. Um, The first few matches, I'm not going to lie, they fell flat for me. I didn't really care. Was, I think Brock and Omos actually put on a good match, which shocked me, because I don't, I'm not a very big fan of Omos. But I've never seen Brock Lesnar sell. I never saw him sell before like that. And that that was that was big for me, because uh, Brock is a good worker, but he also is selfish in some aspects. So to see him like sell, sell, honestly, hats off to him. That was actually a great match. That was also the best that Omas ever looked to me. I think it's the only good Omas match in my eyes that I ever watched. Lash me if you will. I don't really care. Um, but moving on to the stressfulness. This whole thing with Shane McMahon. Child. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just the screech. I just. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was such like it was so anticlimactic, yo. He came out and I was so happy. I'm doing the money dance with him. I'm excited to see Shane McMahon do a coast to coast and do like the same three moves he always does, with little punches stuff like that. He was fired up and all that stuff, but him just like. <laughs> I think he he messed up his ACL or his knee or something. I don't know. The first thing I thought about, I thought it was was his quad. I thought that he was just like his daddy. I just thought about when Rumble. Vince was, That's the first thing that came to my mind. I'm like, yo, he just like his father. I don't care what the DNA say. <laughs> he just like his father. I had to watch the clip back several times because he really did a leapfrog. A leapfrog took him out. At that point, I, I knew he was on the ground just thinking like, yo, I have to pack it up. Like, <laughs> if a leap, game. not even a real bump, a leapfrog, a leapfrog had this man incapacitated. And it was awkward. It was so awkward. The Miz didn't know what to do. We as fans didn't know, like, was he just acting really well? And I'm like, that was really dramatic. He didn't actually even take a bump or nothing. He just, he just rolled over and just right. fell. But the funniest part is just <laughs> Jessica Carr yelling at Snoop Dogg <laughs> to hit him, hit him. <laughs> And this Snoop Dogg just comes out of nowhere with this hook. <laughs> and this took out the myth. And it was just so, it was just so funny to me. Like, it, it was just as messy as when Vince flopped taking a stunner last year. I was just like, honestly, <laughs> as much of a hot mess that it is, it's a memorable moment that no one's going to forget about. Like, I feel like it was a beautiful mistake. I obviously don't want to see Shane McMahon after that. He probably doesn't want to wrestle at any time after that. But, yo, that shit had me weak, weak. But the fuckery didn't stop there. It did not stop there because Finn and Edge came out. And Edge came out, like, in this Party City costume mask thing. What was he going for? What was he going for? Funny thing is, it looked it looked better in person than it did. Did it really? Because yeah. I don't, that looks so cheap. But that looks I- so cheap. But keep going, keep going, keep going. Not, it was just a hot mess. I expected, like, better. You know, I expected better if he's going to bring out the, the Brew character. But, like, whatever. 
That was a hot mess. That was a hot mess. Um, I thought the outfit looked it cheap. I'm like, all right, Edge, like, you know, like, okay, it is what it is. But poor Finn Balor. Poor Finn Balor. The man took a bump from a ladder. I, I don't know what happened there. I'm not sure if Finn just wasn't ready to take the bump. I don't know if he expected a ladder to come at him. But that match <laughs> suffered from that. Um, and, and, it's, and it's upsetting to me just because that was one of the matches that I actually look forward to because Finn came out looking amazing. And I love the way that the demon character looked. And I was expecting just so much more. But sadly enough, Finn took a very nasty bump from a ladder being thrown at him. His head was busted wide open. There was blood leaking everywhere, like everywhere to the point where, yeah, like they had to do mini surgery on a demon which took me out the whole match because i'm just like all right i know he had to be attended to but at that point like you're a demon right (laughs) like nursing a demon like that that was just like yo this match you can't save it you i'm not you can't save it after this but even then so i'm like all right the demon probably has to go over because why would you bring in finn balor in his most elite form a form that we we rarely see him in you know like Edge's character does not add up to the to the demon. So the part that took me out even more than now, outside outside of the fact that Edge does not know how to call an audible, because this man went down and then all Edge started doing was awkwardly putting up furniture in the back. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you putting up a ladder and setting up a table? Like, what are you doing? It was so awkward. I'm like, why does Snoop Dogg know what to do? But you over here just putting up furniture, not knowing what to do, child. That stressed me out. That pissed me off, though. The ending of the match pissed me off because there's no reason why, absolutely zero reason why, someone whose contract's about to expire within the year is going to build a faction and then basically behead the faction by taking out Finn. Not just even regular Finn, but elite Finn. Because at that point, now we have two mystical characters that don't nobody care to see anymore. I don't care to see the Fiend. Don't nobody else care to see the Fiend. And I think after that, don't nobody want to see the demon because you got beat up by Edge, of, of an old veteran. Like, how do you create a faction just to destroy the faction, knowing you're going to leave? And knowing that the other person, one of the other people in the faction, Rhea, got the belt, it would make more sense that Finn went over. Yeah. Or am I missing something? I know Dominic lost, we could get over that, but Finn... Should have won. And there's no other way you could argue with that. And I'm an Edge fan. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people expect me to pop, to be jumping out of my seat. I was pissed. I was pissed. I'm mad at Edge. Okay? He's sleeping on the couch tonight. He's still sleeping on the couch since Sunday. No. Not okay with that. Not okay with that. I actually want to pause right here because we're going to argue over the main event. So I want right. Jordan to give me his rundown first. All right. So, boom. I'm going to start with night one. I agree with you. The Rhea versus Charlotte was definitely one of my favorite matches on the card. Definitely mm. super passionate and super intense. Um, funny part is, I kind of share the same sentiment as you as far as like Charlotte being selfish because she didn't give back or she didn't put somebody over. But it's kind of the same thing as Brock Lesnar's selling case, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen so much that when it does happen, it's valued that much more. So... I can. I don't even think it's a matter of Charlotte being selfish. I think Charlotte was being picky. And because she's being picky, whoever she decides to put over at that rate, is, it's, it's going to be way more valuable than it would have years ago with whomever. You know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I didn't mind Charlotte being picky because when Rhea won, it felt important. It felt like a big deal. It felt like a legit redemption story. So then that's one. So funny thing about the Ray Dominic match, right? Do you remember the last time that that uh that Ray was in a low rider with Eddie at a WWE pay-per-view? I don't know which pay-per-view, but I know he definitely was in the low rider before. WrestleMania 21 in Los Angeles. So oh. the whole entrance was, I believe, I think the entrance was a callback. So the fact that he was able to do that. So the fact that he was able to do that in WrestleMania 21, I think if I'm not mistaken, they were, they were the tag team champions at the time. And I think it was Eddie versus, versus Ray. It was Eddie versus Ray. So the fact that he was able to come out to, uh, 
come out with Snoop in the low rider was a great callback to that moment. Um, so I, 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 I really, 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 really like that. Now, night two was interesting for me because I was there in person. And it was very interesting kind of seeing the run of the show and how it was happening because there were actually a couple moments, there were actually a couple matches, in my opinion, that actually surprised me. Obviously, Brock Lesnar versus Omos was one. Brock selling was, was, was great, and I was surprised. But I was like, wait a minute. Now I know why he didn't sell for a lot of people because it wasn't believable. I can believe that a 400-pound man like Omos can throw around somebody like Brock Lesnar because he's a physically larger person than him. I don't think that would have worked with Finn Balor. I don't think that would have worked with AJ Styles. I don't think that that would have worked with a couple of other people. So it kind of made sense in that, right? Um, in addition to that, another match that got my attention, the triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship. That was a banger. That was a banger. And oh, I forgot about was, that. Go ahead, and go it ahead. was even better in person. Um, I thought that they did a really good job telling the story. And it felt like it was a Drew Sheamus match featuring Gunter. But I felt like that played into Gunter's character better because it was he could just pick up the scraps, get the win, still retain his title. Um, while giving Drew and Sheamus a worthy WrestleMania spotlight. So then there was that. Um, another match from night two that sent me for a loop, I guess was the Edge Finn Balor match. I don't want to say that I was mad at it. I think that there were a lot of things that kind of detoured the momentum of the match that I felt like altered it drastically. Obviously, the ladder being thrown at Finn's head being one of them. Because there was a point in time he threw the ladder, Finn went down, and I just remember, because I was in like the 300 section, I remember just... Finn went down and then he like picked his head up and then there was just a pool of blood. And I was just like, oh, he's leaking. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, wait a minute. Is he like, did he blade or like, did it come from his head or, and then I was just like, then I saw the medical staff come by and I was like, oh, this is, this is real. And then when I saw the injury later, cause he needed 14 staples to the head. I was just like, God. So, good spot. There were also a couple other good spots that I thought were really, really cool um, that actually should have gone through, in my opinion. One of them being the double stomp from the cage. As you just, he should have just taken that. But yes, yes, and it should have finished there. That should have just that should have been the end. But you know, it is what it is. Um, but that match wasn't necessarily. I, I, I liked it. Like I enjoyed it. Brood Edge to me. That entrance in person was so tough. It looked so good. Um, so I'm very, very surprised that it didn't translate well over camera. But sometimes it's just how the game goes. But so to the main event with Cody and Roman. Oh, Scato. Yes, I do that. You know what? I had this whole thing planned, but Angie brought it up and it made me realize why I wrong? was feeling that not necessarily oh. that I was wrong, <laughs> but here's, here's my, here's my take on it. Right. I was there. I watch Cody and Roman in mm -hmm. person, which honestly top five wrestle, top two pro wrestling experiences I've ever had in my life. But Fair. It felt like you you felt it in the building. This is Cody's night. This is Cody's night. Like everybody in the the building, and when and like Angie said, that pop when you when they, he he did the whoa, you think it was loud on camera. And SoFi, deafening. Mm -hmm. It was deafening. How how loud that pop was. But I'll tell you this, when it came down to the match and the finish, I was heartbroken. I was legitimately heartbroken. I was surprised. And I was just like, oh my God. Now, I was mad when we left the stadium because I was like, I felt like Cody should have won. Then I kept thinking about it 
And it was like, do you think Cody won or do you think Cody should have won because you wanted him to win? Or do you think Cody should have won because that would be best for the story? And I have a couple of points about that. I feel, and I still kind of wish I could have seen Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes win the championship because everything was, everything was perfect. Yes. The merch was on sale. Yep. The baby that cured racism was ringside. Everything <laughs> Not was the in baby that place. Cured racism. Everything was in place for Cody Rhodes to win. But and I feel like, but here's the thing. I feel like the reason why it was so heartbreaking when he lost is because everything was in place for him to, to win. The gear was fire. The entrance was fire. It was WrestleMania 39. We've been seeing tension in the bloodline. The night before, the Usos lose their tag titles, which, by the way, was another great moment. And they made the right decision by making that the main event. Oh, so how do they, we skip over Sammy and Kevin K and Owens? KO and Christ. Sammy. I think we that were just was talking. Amazing. About, that was yeah. an amazing match. But I think that everything that was surrounding... WrestleMania 39 with the buildup of this match with the departure of Cody from AEW. I think that that's what made everything so heartbreaking when he didn't win. And mm. so I still wish that he would have won. However, mm. the reason why, and, and, and so I'm going to put this to you, like put it to you like this. You're right. You were right. Oh, thanks. I'm going to start off with, I'm going <laughs> to put that in perspective, but however, now you have my attention. Part of the reason why I wasn't necessarily mad about it after about a day or two is for two reasons. One, this is how wrestling is supposed to feel. This is how it's supposed to. You're supposed to be legit overjoyed or legit heartbroken. That's how you know it's a good story. That's one. Two, when it comes to the story of the bloodline, when it comes to the story of Roman Reigns, there have been multiple times in the past two to three years where we said oh, Roman's going to drop it to this person. Roman's going to drop it to this person or Roman should lose to this person, right? And instead of us getting something that we thought we wanted, we get something better. I thought that Roman was going to drop the title at, at Mania to, to, to Edge or Daniel Bryan. But... The fact that he won and then Daniel Bryan left shortly thereafter and Edge went the direction that he went made his victory so much sweeter. And that led to Sami Zayn being the honorary oos. That led to Sami Zayn and, and KO reuniting in a way that we actually wanted since WrestleMania 34. Who did Roman get last year? That was uh, 2021. 2022, with, who did Roman get? It skips my mind now. Right? It's... It skips my mind. I, I was he on. I feel like he was on the card, and he definitely won. He was definitely on the card, and he definitely wrestled. I'm gonna look that up, but you can match. continue your point. But I, I think that, I think that, he, like, the bloodline storyline. Oh, is he had so, Brock. He had Brock. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, for the undisputed, because that yeah. was when he got both belts. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's one of those things where it's like. I've been disappointed when it comes to the bloodline storyline. I've always been in the short term, been disappointed, but in the long term, I've been rewarded because there's been so many good things that have come from this, that it's like, if we wanted it to stop at the point that we wanted it to stop, we wouldn't have gotten this. You know what I mean? So that's just like my, my point about, about the, the, the main event. It also feels very, very Rocky esque that they that there's a potential to this possibly going to WrestleMania 40, and I, and and if that is true, I want to see how that happens. But I definitely want to hear your your point of view and your stance. Well, actually, I know your point of view and your stance. I want you to tell the people your point of view and your stance. Well, the match itself was phenomenal, like yes. phenomenal storytelling. It actually gave me the same type of chills of watching like The Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels in terms of just like how good the storytelling was and like the little bits and pieces of emotion you got. That was exciting. That was so exciting to me. As you guys put it, I did feel like a little kid on the edge of my seat. And as you also put it, all the elements were there for it to just feel like, yeah, like this has to go to Cody. And I just feel like 
we were let down for I think two reasons because not for nothing we were all expecting the rock Let's start there. We all were expecting early on in the year that we were going to get The Rock versus Roman and that this was going to close off the storyline, you know, because either he beats The Rock and he just kind of like um, seals it that he is like the tribal chief. Or, you know, if you want to just bullshit and have The Rock win just so he has a title run for five minutes, you could just bullshit with that. But you knew that it was going to go to Roman and that was the case and that would make more sense. But I feel like it's been like three WrestleMania wins in And it's not that Roman is a bad champion. He's a great champion. He's an excellent heel. If anything, now, like, he has probably more heel heat than... Nah, I'm lying. I was going to say more heel heat than ever, but he never had more heel heat than when he beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. I still still hold a grudge to him from him um, from back then. But as a heel, he has monstrous heat from this moment. And I just feel like it just felt like two letdowns, at least for me personally, just because it's just like we didn't get the rock, but then we thought that this was like a great reconciliation to just have um, Cody there, especially with how naturally everything happened with him coming in from AEW, the fans being on Cody's side naturally because you still have like hardcore WWE marks that will always ride for WWE. And then that amazing match with Seth and him having an injury, but still wrestling through the match and powering through like a baby face, going away, coming back, winning on the Royal Rumble as predicted. And then just building up this like really nasty behind storyline where they brought Dusty into the situation, you know, and they shot all over Cody and Roman constantly reminded Cody that like, yeah, he was Dusty's favorite. He's the ideal wrestler. Suck on it. You know what I mean? You definitely pulled on all of our heartstrings. And on top of that, he was bringing little elements of Dusty into the match. We all mm. saw it. And it's just, it just got me so invested. I was like, yo, this has to go to Cody. There's no other way. But I, as soon as I saw the referee go down, I'm like, yo, there's no way. There's no way. They cannot do this to us. <laughs> they can't do this to us. I was, I was like, yo, when I saw the Usos coming, I was stressed. I was so stressed. But then Sammy and, and, and Kevin came and I was just like, yes, yes, yes. Fuck them up. Fuck them up. Don't take this away from me. And then I wasn't expecting Solo. I really wasn't. Yes. I forgot he was there because he's so quiet. He's so quiet. That's the part that fucked me up. When he came in and, out and he, he socked him in the throat or some shit like that, I was like, oh, yo, we're done. It's a wrap. If he would have, if he would have kicked out of that and still like do like a crossroads or whatever, that would have been ill. But as soon as like I saw that, I was like, no, no, I was so mad. I was so upset. I had nothing to say after the show. I just remember like I, I was at Zaire's house. Um, by the way, he has shitty connections. So I apologize for the spaces this weekend. That's a whole other story. But I was so pissed that I just I had nothing to say. I'm like, Z, I'm just gonna. I'm going to pack it up from here. I was so upset. Like I had nothing to say. I was so upset. I was like, of all the fucking matches on the card, bro, it was this one that I was invested in. And they couldn't give us that? And, like, my brain just couldn't help but to think, well, damn, like, we just got news that Vince never really left, that he's been here. I'm like, this has him ran all fucking over it. He fucking hates us. He can never give us what we want. Like, yo, what, what do we ever do as fans? That he's right, always yeah. out to, to get us. Like, I don't understand. Because I'm like, if Cody don't win, who else? Because no one else feels good enough to me. I'm sorry. Some people wanted Sammy to take the belt. They tried it then. He lost. Honestly, at this point, I don't need it because he has the belt with, Ke- with Kevin Owens. And then right. some people are saying they're going to pivot this way to Jey Uso. I'm like, I don't want to see Jey Uso with the goddamn fucking belt. I want to Cody. That's my John Cena right now. All right? Cody Luther King. Okay? Oh. He did not march for this. Okay? He did not march for our rights for this. Not as so okay? Cody Luther. I, I'm so I why am I getting emotional? I, I feel like my eyes are getting watered. I actually like I cried while I was driving back. That's how much of a loser I am. I cried because Cody lost. That's how much of a child I am about this match. Dweeb. Go on. You look like you have something to say. Dweeb. I was gonna say, um <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna pivot because we're pressed for time, but we wanna we want to uh what you call it? We want to to, to know your impressions of WrestleMania weekend, <laughs> WrestleMania thirty nine weekend. There's actually we were gonna talk about Seth and, and Oscar, but we're gonna skip those two for now because this is a long show. We're just gonna move on because we were talking about WrestleMania weekend. One of the things that happened during WrestleMania weekend was Rey Mysterio's 
Hall of Fame induction. But prior to that Hall of Fame induction, uh, Rey Mysterio handed out LWO t-shirts to the members of La Legado del Fantasma in response to their efforts against the oh, Judgment that's where Day. You got it from. And now the LWO is back. There have been reports circulating that the L that Legato has been referred to as the LWO internally. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the LWO was a WCW stable led by Eddie Guerrero. Uh, how do you feel about the stable's return to WWE at this point in time? That was fire. I love I love it, but I have like a like-hate relationship only because it's so amazing on paper. I love the visuals of it. When they came and they did like their interference, I was all over and I was eating it up. But for some reason, I get frustrated when it comes to factions because I feel like, I feel like when it comes to modern day wrestling, they don't like factions. They don't appreciate them and they tend to break them up as soon as they put them together. That's the part that stresses me out because like I feel like I get excited. I'm like, okay, what are they going to do with this? And they don't do anything grandiose. But then part of me is just like, oh, maybe they want to keep them together. So when, like, Hispanic Heritage Match comes in, like, you're, you're going to want to put them. You know what I mean? You're going to make right. them your face. Because everything's like a marketing thing with this company. So I don't know how to feel about it because I feel like they don't ever do what I think that they're going to do with the potential they got. You know what I'm saying? Right. What's your take on it? First of all, I just want to say that I love it. I love the return of the LWO. And for those of you who don't remember, when, when Rey Mysterio was put into the, the, the LWO, it was by force. He did not do it by will. Eddie was the one who kind of beat him up into the gang. Um, but now that he's kind of taken on this role as like a mentor um, of, the, of the group, I think that it's going to work, and I think that it's going to stick. Also, timing is everything because what's the next WWE paper uh, premium live event backlash where is it Puerto Rico what just happened on Raw Wait Bad Bunny got attacked Bad Bunny just got attacked by Dominic and um great sell by Damian. the way but right uh Dominic and Damien attacked Bad Bunny and I know for a fact it looks like I feel like what's gonna happen this is just a prediction this is not confirmed it's just, just like an opinion I think Rey Mysterio is going to make Bad Bunny an honorary member of the LWO. And they're going to have a tag team match at Backlash where it's going to be Rey Mysterio and Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest and Dominic Mysterio. But let me tell you something. When they mm. go to Puerto Rico and they come out with that LWO merch, they're going to move units. They are going to move units, okay? And so I think that this is a great move especially ahead of Backlash. Um, and I also think that it's just a really cool way of kind of kind of bringing Legado into a kind of their face role because I feel like Legado del Fantasma is a heel faction. LWO is a face faction. It, like, it feels very face. It feels very, like, relatable. It feels like it's supposed to come off as, like, this, you know, as this group that can relate to the people on a heavier on a heavier level than they did when they were just legato. And I'm just really, really excited for it. I think this is going to be really, really cool and really, really dope to see. And I think that it's going to translate very, very well, especially when it comes to backlash. But that's going to be our, our time for LWO. But let us know how you feel about the return of the LWO to WWE. Um, I'm really excited. Mo is as well. But we're moving on because speaking of the Guerreros, a shocking development has come to light this past week. Sherilyn Guerrero, the daughter of Eddie Guerrero, has come forth to talk about how her stepfather has sex had sexually assaulted her back in 2020. Uh, in response to this, Vicky Guerrero, her mother, her mother, opted to take the side of the stepfather, who I believe is her current husband. I'm not completely sure. Chavo Guerrero actually came out and, you know, came out publicly via Twitter and said that, she supports that he supports Sherilyn and that she is a brave and courageous woman. Vicky then went on Instagram and went on a rant, uh, accused her of, of her daughter being a narcissist, said that she was trying to go, uh, you know, she was trying to put her in therapy and this is what she gets. And she said that she was going to bring her to court and she would also not be related to her anymore. I just want to know what's going on. And I wanted to know how you felt about this because there's a lot going on and there's a lot happening. Wow, that was that was very loaded. Um, 
Vicky Guerrero is a terrible person, and she's just as terrible as I thought she was. <laughs> no, it's just <laughs> it started with the MAGA stuff, but then you know that's that's all we really knew, and it's just I just can't understand. You said that they're stepdaughters or they're they're blood related. Uh, so Vicky and Sherilyn are related by blood, but okay. The the man that sexually assaulted her is her stepfather. Okay. Either way, it's just disgusting because I feel like women are supposed to stick with one another, especially if that's like your daughter telling you. You know what I mean? I just feel like it's just disgusting and, it is, and it's just disturbing, especially for me to hear it as a woman that you did not trust your own daughter to tell you that she's uncomfortable and that she's been assaulted in a rape like that is just i must say that we're on youtube so far. i'm sorry i apologize for that but like it's just how do you not how does your native instincts not kick into want to protect your young like to me i just think it's disgusting that you want to hide behind a man for a while like why well, for what reason would she have to lie about that because for the most part she's pretty low-key so for her to call her a narcissist like it's it's crazy because she said that she's been hiding this for two years like, no one hears about her. She's rarely in any news. She's, like, kind of just, like, in the background. And she chooses right. to be in the background. And it just seemed like it was more a projection that she's stating that, oh, she's a narcissist and I tried putting her in therapy and X, Y, and Z or whatnot. Like, she's obviously not going to heal if the person that literally is the reason why she's here is can't even, like, protect her, make, make her feel safe. Right. Yet you chose an outsider over your, your own your own offspring like this that's just so insane to me i couldn't imagine how she feels in that moment she probably feels alone and i don't blame her for coming out about it i don't she probably thinks that she's she, that considering like you know we, we just had wrestlemania and all that stuff happened maybe she was just trying to like ride off of a high or she was trying to like clout chase i don't see any of that actually i just see a woman that is emotionally disturbed and hurt and she obviously has been trying to like swallow this pill for the longest that obviously her mom doesn't like care or value her and she rather put that life over her um and it's just it's just sad i'm happy that she vocalized herself i'm very sad to hear that like she's gonna be taking a court over it because just like she didn't ask for this no female ever asks for that type of shit to happen ever right. you know um and it takes a lot for a female to, to stand up, especially nowadays, because that's everyone's first move to do. They always want to somehow blame the female for something that was out of their control when a grown ass man should just learn how to control themselves. Like, bro, what are you talking nice. about? What are you talking about? I, when she was telling her story, I did like watch half of the TikTok and then I got sick to my stomach and I just I stopped. Like she was saying that, oh, he just wasn't himself that day. Fuck you mean. That's not who he really is. He still did the crime. Right. That, like, you, <laughs> he still did the crime, A. But at the same time, the times where people are doing fuck shit when you least expect it, that's when you really had to notate the person that you're dealing with. Boom. That's insane to me. Like, bro, bro, I kind of, when she said that, I died on the inside for her. I just. Women need to be more protected and you need to take things more seriously when a female vocalizes that she has been a victim of essay and or the R word or whatnot. I just, I, I'm like lost for words and I'm trying to pick them up because you giving me the extra details just made me feel poor just now. Mm. I'm going to pause right here and I'm just going to let you pick up because I'm, yeah, I'm so, wow. so yeah, Vic, when it comes to Vicky Guerrero, um, there have been reports of her just being an immoral human being for a very long time. And uh, now we're starting to see why. Um, I stand with Sherilyn. I think I speak for a lot of sane, <laughs> moral-centric human beings when I say that we stand with Sherilyn. Um, because sexual assault is not something that you you play around with. Rape is not something that you play around with. And on top of that, siding with a man who oh. has touched your daughter is nuts is like absolutely insane and the fact that you believe a man more than you believe your daughter is nuts 
is insane. And I, I want to send my love out to Sherilyn just because regardless so of all, yeah, regardless of all the public support that she's getting, like, dog, it was you and Eddie. Um, it was you and Eddie. Those are her parents. Mm-hmm. And to one of them is, you know, gone on to be with the Lord and the other one is just not supportive or is prioritizing the support of a man so alone. over her is so uncomfortable and wow. has and has the potential to be traumatic. And it's just like that's just so sad and so nasty. Um now since then Vicky has deleted the the post, but she could go to hell. Dog, that ain't it. Vicky, that's that ain't it, it, bro. And that's not it. And um, She should be removed th- from her position. Fact, I do not want to see her in wrestling. I, I don't really think that know. she's in AEW. I don't think she's in AEW still. But I, like Chav, the fact that Chavo is siding with Sherilyn tells me all that I need to know. So I, I'm not even going to go deep into that. But Yeah, Chavo's normally in the right. Yeah. I'm, we want to stand with Sherilyn and just make that very, very clear that when we talk about, you know, SA and R, these are not things to be played with. Um, and women come out, come forward, talk about these issues with whomever that you can. Um, and that's really all that I have to say about that, man, but we're going to move on to the next topic. So one woman superstar that we've been talking about for the past, God knows how many months is Naomi, uh, who is known her, 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 her real name is Trinity Fatu. Um, but my question is, is Trinity heading, heading to Ring of Honor? Because during WrestleMania weekend, Trinity was the guest of honor at Wale Mania, but the most prominent appearance that she made was sitting ringside for the Ring of Honor World Women's Championship match featuring Athena. So she's already come out and said that she's no longer part of WWE. So we don't have to worry about that. But with her future destination in question, do you believe that this is a sign that Trinity is heading to Ring of Honor? Um, I just want to comment, side comment. She looked the fuck good. Look good. Yeah, she with did. The, with the bangs and the sparkly one piece. Ooh, Jimmy lucky. Jimmy's lucky. But, um, going back to your question, um, the only reason why I'm saying no at the moment is that, I don't know, she seems kind of like all the way in with her modeling contract and that she's just doing her thing and she's still taking an extended break. I wouldn't be surprised if she came to... Ring of Honor a- and or AEW since they bought them. You know what I mean? And I think that'd be exciting. It definitely would spice up the the show. Um, and hell, we might down the line see Mercedes come by, you know? I don't put it past her that she probably still has the bug for wrestling because she's still young, athletic. She looks her best. She always looks very good. Um, but I feel like she's still kind of like taking and enjoying her break. So... Maybe down the line, but not not right now. I just think that they were having fun during Wally Mania, and they were just inviting people from all different sectors, and she was just she was just happened to be there, you know. But I love how they gave her the center stage and that pop that she got from the crowd. That was lovely, so heartwarming because I want Trinity to know that she's loved, and that we all support her culture, especially supports everything that. Trini has been doing on her own journey and whatever she does that makes her happy. But momentarily, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say down the line, she may get the bug, but I think she's more focused on just being at peace and focusing on other creative projects. But what do you think? First of all, I want to kind of build off of what you were saying as far as Wale Mania. Wale Mania is so important. Has become such an important event to- I want to go. To wrestlers of color. Absolutely. I need to be there. We need to be there for Philly. Um- but I think it's so important when it comes to wrestlers of color, specifically black wrestlers, because it has become a safe space where we can be celebrated, <laughs> adhered, um, promoted, cele- what, like I said earlier, celebrated and just kind of honored. And to see Naomi or Trinity be honored in that light, in that manner, I think it's just an amazing thing to see guys from all different promotions. We saw like a little hit row reunion. We saw the bloodline there with the solo and the Usos. And I saw Samoa all- Joe rapping. Samoa <laughs> Joe rapping. Some Listen, me and Angie have been talking about this for years. Samoa Joe is from Brooklyn. I don't care. He's talking about some Huntington Beach, Cali. Bro, we saw that man at SummerSlam and he was extra static in the Barclays. He is from Brooklyn, New York. He is from Crown Heights. But anywho, um, 
Wale Mania is just very, very important to the culture and to all of the organizers. Thank you for putting together an event of that magnitude because it's so, 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 so needed. Moving on. Do I think that Trinity is going to ring of honor? Eventually, yes, but like you said, not right now. She's so locked into whatever she's doing in her, in her life and she's kind of riding that wave. And I think that she's pulling the Mercedes route as far as just like taking time back and just enjoying her space and enjoying her time and enjoying whatever she's doing. Um, and she'll get back to it when she gets back to it. Obviously, I, you know, she's not with WWE anymore, but I'm pretty sure that the door is open in WWE. I'm pretty sure that the door is open uh, for Ring of Honor or AEW, and I'm pretty sure she's going to be welcomed uh, wherever she goes. And yeah, Trinity's going to shine anywhere she goes, and that's just a given. But I feel like just her sitting ringside, she's planting seeds. She may not be getting back into full-blown wrestling mode but i think she's planting seeds and i think she knows what the next stop for her is in wrestling when she decides she wants to go back but we want to know what y'all think is trinity heading to ring of honor let us know in the comments below but we're moving on because one of the the downfalls of wrestlemania weekend was raw after mania but one of the most one of the best shows this week has been all Elite Wrestling's Dynamite came on last night. They were live from UBS Arena in Elmont, New York. And it seemed like they were clapping back at the Raw After Mania, a, a, a show that's been heavily criticized and scrutinized. But they had a couple of major announcements, one of them being that All In will be in London at Wembley Stadium on August 27th. So I wanted to know a couple things. Number one, your impressions about uh, AEW Dynamite uh, this past week, as well as, you know, their kind of response to Raw After Mania, as well as their announcement of going to All In, uh, going to London for All In. I'm going to work backwards on that. Um, them going to London is fucking huge, actually, because is that their first time they're going out of the whole continent? I believe so. That's huge. And it's insane because it's still within a year span of when WWE decided to take it to Europe, despite the fact that they had obviously like NXT UK. So that is huge. Um, good for them. Um, now, as far as like the response, I don't even think it was a response to just Raw being bad. I just think that it was a response to even just Mania because, I mean, you gave me like, if you were to ask me to rate Mania out of like a 10, it got like a 6.5 6.8 out of me because of the choices and then just the lack of just you know the matches just not being important despite the fact they cut them down this year i felt like it was a response to all that shit like all right you're not gonna get the fans what they want we're going to and we're gonna make this a fun show so that was a smart business move now i didn't get to watch the whole show front to back but i did see some highlights. Jay White popping up was one of them, which is such such a swerve because everyone believed in their mama that we're gonna get Jay White after Mania, like that's what we expected for Raw, and they're just like, nah, we're gonna hit him with a swerve and have him jump. Ricky Starks, one of my faves from AEW, so I'm so excited to see this feud. I know it's gonna be a banger of the mat of a match, so I'm looking forward to that. But the part that really threw me off. <laughs> Jordan knows what I'm going to say. The guns coming out to many men while they're already in New York. <laughs> Whose idea was this? I need to know. <laughs> I need to know. That shit took me out. And I, I don't even have an opinion towards the guns. At least previously I did not. But just that alone made me fans. They, they need to maintain that as their theme song from here on out. I'm so with it. Like, I'm so with it. That was just so fucking funny and so new york and i'm like honestly i love that but yeah no i definitely do feel like this was a response uh aew definitely worked in a timely manner um i would hope that every show kind of continues in this momentum i can't tell if they did it just because it was new york or do they plan this out ahead of time that let's just put this in new york because they're gonna fumble the bag anyways and we're going to like grab all the attention going into double or nothing hmm I don't know, but all I know is that since I'm on a break from watching WWE because they pissed me off during WrestleMania, I'm definitely watching more AEW. But what do you think, Jordan? 
I'm gonna start with this. Tony Khan smells blood. Whew. He smells blood. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if he's gonna go in for the kill. I don't think that WWE can be killed by another wrestling company, but I think that based off of this weekend, Tony Khan smells blood. And everything that them cats was saying over the last six months, he's gonna make them pay. Oh, you wanna take jabs at me in Montreal? Oh, you want to mm-hmm. take jabs at me on podcasts talking about you can't operate at a loss? Cool. You better not slip up. Because as, as, as soon as you do, I'm going to catch you lacking. And that's what he did. Tony Khan caught WWE lacking this past week. And it's more embarrassing because it ended off on Cody, who was in the company, losing. Mm-hmm. Do you know how crazy that is? Our whole setup? And, and, and let's, let's talk about this, right? First of all, anytime they're in New York, it's always going to be a good show, whether it's Grand Slam or whether it's UBS. And I think that it's Duh. crazy whether I think it's crazy how they've kind of let WWE do Barclays, do the Garden, because let's not make a mistake. If they can sell out or do well at UBS Arena, they can do well at the Barclays Center. UBS mm-hmm. is a bigger venue than the Barclays Center. So I think we got to put that out there. First off, starting off the show, we're getting Jay White and him saying, I'm all elite. That was a slap in the face. Then them doing four championship matches and continuing to build this blood, this uh, Blackpool Combat Club versus Elite Feud. They were like, all right, we're going to, if y'all going to fumble, fumble this story with Cody and Roman, we're going to continue to build this Elite versus Blackpool Combat Club story. And we'll see who has the last lap then. Then we have this announcement about the London show, right? And let me put this into some perspective for you. They're doing it at Wembley Arena, Wembley Stadium. Wembley Stadium is a bigger venue than the O2 Arena, which is going to be the host arena of WWE's Money in the Bank. So Tony is like, I'm a one-up, y'all. And I don't know how many tickets they're going to sell, I don't know how how well they're going to do, but let me put this into some perspective. If if All In does if All In does 40,000 people, the optics are going to change pertaining to AEW. And it's not a coincidence that they brought back the title All In because that was something that was previously owned by Ring of Honor. And that was the show that was started by Cody Rhodes and the Elite. Mm. So I just think that the optics of everything are just very, very interesting. And then, of course, the show ends with FTR retaining. So I, I, I'm looking at the Raw After Mania, and I'm looking at AEW Dynamite on April 5th, and I'm see two, seeing two totally different narratives. Mm. I'm looking at Raw After Mania, and I'm seeing... This company is changing. This company is going back to the way it was. And I'm looking at the end of Dynamite and I'm saying, I'm seeing the narrative of AEW saying, we're just getting started. Not only are we just getting started, but we smell blood. While Mm -hmm. WWE is going back to old ways because they've accomplished Mm -hmm. their goal of selling the company, AEW is here to say, while you're there for the bag, we're here for the fans. And we're going to give them what they want, even if you don't want to give them what they want. And I'm not saying that that means that WWE is going to go out of business. I doubt it. I don't think that AEW is going to do anything of harm to WWE. But I do think that this positions AEW greater than they've ever been positioned before. Because now it's just not the alternative. Now we're another big leagues. That's all that I have to say about that. But let us know how you feel about this uh, AEW show uh, in Long Island, as well as how All In uh, is going to be at Wembley Stadium on August 27th. That's nuts. But anywho, that concludes our season premiere and our anniversary show. Thank you guys so much. Angie, thank you so much for coming on the show. We love you so much, bro. And we'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye.